Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools, where we help everyday folks supercharge their workflows. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Airtable API, and more specifically, how you can use pagination with the Airtable API, so that if your Airtable data has more than 100 rows, you're able to get every single last row of data in a single script. Let's go ahead and just dive right into it. All right, so up on the screen, we have a new spreadsheet that we just created, and this is going to be specifically just for pagination uh, around the Airtable base that we have. And I created an Airtable base that has about 10,000 records, so just shy of that by six. But there's a lot of records in here, and one of the reasons that we need to do pagination is because in the API docs for Airtable, the default limit is 100 records. So we're going to have to parse through this uh, quite a bunch of times in order to get all the records that we do have within our Airtable base. So first thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and just open up our API documentation. To do that, that's going to be the little option up here for help. Once you click that, and there's a little tray that's going to pop up. And on the bottom of it is API documentation. As you click on that, it's going to open up a new window or a new tab. The moment that we're going to be getting is the orders table. And then there is a list records um, option over here on the right. And that's the one that we're going to be using. So in our Airtable base, we're going to take the uh, endpoint, which is just this guy right here. And there's the base ID as well as slash orders. We don't need the rest of this over here, which says max records three and then view goes to grid view. It's going to default to a grid view um, by itself. And then within here, there's a max records, which is, you know, 100 by default. And since we have uh, almost 10,000 records, we're going to have to uh, use pagination for that. So as we scroll down a little bit, pagination, the server returns one page. And essentially what we need to do is we need to find the offset value within uh, the response, the API response that we get. Now, going back over to our spreadsheet, we're going to go over to tools. And then do script editor and that's how we're going to open up our script editor in order to start creating our um, api request so i have one open in here we'll just rename this to request Airtable. and try to keep this as simple as possible and now we're going to designate our uh, url which is going to be const url equals and then the thing that we just uh, copied over from the Airtable documentation. Let's use single quotes here just in case we have to use double quotes later. Now from here, we're just going to do a quick call uh, to Airtable. So in order to do that, we also have to add in the API key. And I actually created a separate file for secrets. Just uh, you can do the same thing to just store all your API keys. Uh, it's really up to you if you want to do that. Uh, for me, I like to keep it separate just to keep things clean. So we just secret API keys, and I'm going to be grabbing the Airtable one from here. So once we have that, uh, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to start creating our headers, uh, as well as our options that we're going to use within our URL fetch app. So and this is actually a little bit bigger for everybody to see. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say const headers. And within here, we're just going to go ahead and say authorization. And the type of authorization that we have to use with Airtable is the bearer authorization. So we're going to do that. So we'll leave in a space at the end of that. And then we're going to combine it with the API key. And from there, we're also going to say content type is equal to application JSON. Just to say that within this API call, we expect the, uh, the format of the data to come through as uh, a JSON value. Now we're also going to declare options for ourselves here. I'm going to say within the options, headers is equal to the headers that we just declared up above. And then you can also, um, we're going to declare the method as a get request. And now that we have this, we can start making our call. So it's going to be the URL fetch app, which is provided by uh, the Google app script. And that's going to allow us to fetch a URL. And since we already declared the URL, we can use that as well as our options. We can just leave it just like this. And we're going to add this get con uh, content text to the end. And that's going to give us um, some uh, the information back in a form that we can read. Um, so let's just go ahead and just say const response equals to this. 
And before we go ahead and uh, console this out and test it, we also need to parse the JSON that's actually come, come through. So we say const result equals json.parse response. And then from here, we can do the console log. And we're going to use the two ticks over here. We're going to say result equals two dollar sign open curly brackets result. Now, once we run this, we should expect to get or see a bunch of the data that's coming through our Airtable data, uh, which over here is going to be our sample orders data. So let's go ahead and just run this. And then within here, oh, console is not a function. Oh, console.log. Forget guys, typos. You always forget things. So let's go ahead and run this. So we get an object out of that, which is great. Uh, so for us, what we want to do is we're going to want to dive into the results itself and get the records out just so we can see what that looks like. So within here, let's go ahead and say result.records. Let's just make sure we're getting the right information. There's a bunch of objects in there. And then within each record, we're going to be able to see you know, certain things. And just to show what the what this is going to look like, we're going to add a little debugger. So on the side over here, just click on that right next to the line number. I'm going to hit the debug option instead. We do that, it's going to pause. And then within here, we can see all the information. So within the response, we have records and then each record is an ID as well as the fields within there. And we go into the result. It's really, uh, this is includes the offset value, which is exactly what we want. And then within the records, each one. And so just like a nice neatly laid out way of that. So now what we need to do, right? Because we are getting only a hundred, you can see here the array is only a hundred versions of that. And we have 9,000 records, close to 10,000. So we need to actually pass the offset uh, value within our parameter when we make the call over to the Airtable API. So what we're gonna be doing here, let's actually go ahead and just stop this debugger. We are going to want to grab the offset value and then pass that through. So before we do that, let's make this a little bit more generic. Uh, so we're going to take the URL out of here. We're going to use this as a parameter. And then we're also going to say the offset value in here. So let's go ahead and take this and then we'll copy this out. And then above it, we're going to add in another function name that we're going to just say, let's call this get all records just to be super clear. And that's going to be our main function that we're going to use. So we're going to paste that const URL up here. And then we're going to create an array of records. So let records equals to an array. And this is what we're going to use to shove all the individual records from each individual API call so that we have that uh, in a nice neat format that we can shove back into our Google Sheet. So we're also going to want to declare an initial response just to get things started off. So it's going to be initial underscore response snake case. And then we're going to say request Airtable. So we're going to use the URL. And then because we don't have an offset yet, we can leave that part blank. You don't have to pass it um, all the time. If we did, you know, we could just pass through blank, but you don't really need to uh, for, for this case. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to say get the records from that. So records.push. And that's going to be from the initial response dot records. Before we do that, going back over to our request table. Um, function at the end of it, we just need to make sure we're returning uh, the data that's result, uh, in it. So go ahead and do that. We don't need this console log anymore, so we can remove it. And just make sure that you're returning that result. So once we have that, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the offset. So we're going to say let offset. And we're using the let statement because um, the offset value will change over time because we're going to replace that as we get new API responses from the Airtable API. So the first offset that we're gonna do is gonna be equal to the initial response dot offset. Just like how in the debugger, when we ran that before, we found an offset value. So before we move forward, let's go ahead and just shove another uh, debugger in there. And we'll move this one at the end over here because we don't need it anymore. Save this and then we're going to run our get all records. Uh, function. When we run this, it's going to give us back a bunch, bunch of information. Right now, offset is undefined. We go forward, we can have that. So within the initial response, we see that we have the offset value and then the records, we have 100. So all this is working right now, which is great. 
So now that we have this, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a, uh, a loop um, only if there is an offset value. So we're going to say if offset does not equal, so exclamation mark equal equal to undefined. So as long as it is defined, then we're going to run this. And then within this block, we're going to say loop do, which is just a do while loop uh, we're going to use. And at the end of it, the way that we're going to exit this is while offset does not equal to undefined. And what this is going to do essentially is that at first it's going to check it. And if it is undefined, then we're going to run this code that we're going to put in between the curly brackets with the do statement. And then it's going to continue doing that until uh, the offset value within the response is undefined. So that means whenever there is an offset value, it's going to continue to run whatever we put into this do while loop. So the thing we're going to put into the do while loop, and it's going to be const response. We're just going to declare the response and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. The only difference between, you know, running the request area table URL versus this one is that we're also going to pass through the offset value now. And once we have that offset value, and it's passing through, we're going to say records.push. And then it's going to be the same thing as before, response.results. So it's going to be, instead of the initial resp uh, response, we're going to do response.results because we're doing it within this loop. And we're not overwriting that. So the initial response just gives us the first set of data, uh, the first hundred set of data. And then after that, we're going to go back and then make additional requests to Airtable in order to get all the subsequent uh, responses based on the offset value that is being passed over to us. And then once that is over, we just need to refresh the offset. So we're gonna say offset equals to the new response, you know, that response dot offset. And then that way, as we continue to go, uh, once this response offset is undefined, it's gonna break the loop. But until then, as we get new ones, we're gonna keep passing it. Uh, back to itself and then update the request that we're sending over to Airtable. So we're getting all the new data after the previous 100. So once we have that, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to add in another statement, another if statement over here. So if offset is not equals to undefined, what we're going to do here is we're going to add in to the URL a parameter for offset. So we're going to take the URL that was given through uh, the function call. And we're going to set it equal to itself plus the parameter for offset, which is going to be the question mark offset equals. And then we're going to say plus the offset value that was passed. So now we're ready to test this. So we can just go ahead and let's actually take off this debugger. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to actually stop this right now. And just to make sure we're seeing things as they come through, we're going to say console log. And then we're going to say records count is equal uh, colon dollar sign curly brackets. And within there, we're going to say records dot length. So what we expect to happen here is we're going to make an API call up here with the initial response, then it's going to shove it into the records array. So that's going to be 100 uh, at first. And then if there's an offset value within that response, we're going to do this loop. And each time it runs through that loop, it's going to add in the next 100 or until there are no more. So once this script is done running, we should expect to see the same amount of count as we do within our Airtable app, which right now is equal to 9,994. Let's go to run this. So we can see here that it actually came back, which is records count 100, which means we might have done a typo somewhere or something like that. Give me a second. Let's look through this. Ah, okay. So we should be getting results. It's not response that results, it's response that records. Okay. Good old typo. All right. So let's go ahead and run this again. We don't need this console log anymore. So let's comment that out. Plug the debugger back in and let's go ahead and debug. We have records and we have a bunch of arrays within it. You can see here, there's 
one array with a bunch of arrays within it. So each one has a hundred in there. So what we're actually going to want to do is we're going to want to flatten this out. So above the console log, I'm just going to say records equals to records.flat, which will help us flatten out the array. So we stop that and debug again. Great, so here we go. Great. So you can see here the records is now equal to 9,994, the same amount of records that we have in our HTML base. And that's because we had to flatten out the uh, the records. They were coming in 100 at a time, and we just want to flatten that out into uh, essentially two levels, one the upper level with all of the data, uh, and then each individual nested array will be the individual row that we want to pass the data through as. And the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to shove this into our uh, Google uh, Sheet. So over here, we're going to say return records. And then we're going to create a new function, which is going to say import into Google Sheet. So we'll say import Airtable data. And within here, we're going to say plot data equal to the get all records. It's going to run through everything. And then now we're also going to say const spreadsheet. So SS for short, we're going to say spreadsheet.app.open by ID. So we're just going to go ahead and grab our Google Sheet ID, which is located in the URL. You can just go ahead and grab everything that's between the slash D and slash edit. Put that in quotation marks. You can actually stop the bugger here. And now we're going to grab our sheet. I actually didn't name it anything, so it's just going to be sheet one. We say ss.getSheet by name. It's going to be sheet one. And then we're going to say range equal to sheet.get range we're going to just start this off from the beginning so one comma one which stands for the first uh, first row and the first column and then since we are adding in a bunch of data uh, we're going to say data dot length of the number of rows and then data zero so the first uh, position of the data so that nested array is going to grab the length of that because that's going to indicate to us how many rows we need to um, uh, how many columns we're going to have to fill in and from there we're going to do range dot set values data and once we run this we should expect to see uh all the data populate into our spreadsheet so no debuggers on gonna just run this oh we have an extra parenthesis over here typos okay so let's go ahead and save that run it one more time so the first thing we're going to do here is let's say we're going to do a loop through we're going to use a for loop this time. So we're going to say let i equals zero. We're going to say i is less than data.length i plus plus. And then within here, we're going to grab data i. And within here, let's go ahead and just grab the ID. So we can say for this, let's say let sheet data equal to an open array and we're going to say sheet data dot push and then we're going to do an array in here so that's going to be we're going to start with data i dot id let's also get the order id so that's going to be data i dot fields dot order id and we'll just go down the list over here and since we are going to be using this quite a bit Let's go ahead and take this and actually rename it. We're going to say let fields equals to that. That way we can just say fields that order ID. And we're going to do this a bunch. So. so now what we're going to do here is instead of saying data to, for the set values, we're going to say sheet data. save this we'll stop the debugger and let's go ahead and run our import oh right we're doing the wrong uh data set over here so we should use sheet data when we're getting the range debugger and let's run this and we go over to our Airtable pagination spreadsheet you can see that all the data has come through we don't have a header um but that's okay we can go ahead and fix that too go back in here and then right before we start the for loop let's go ahead and say sheet data dot push 
and we'll just go ahead and put in all the names and we need to do these in little quotes. So that's the, that's it. That's the Airtable ID. And then we have the order ID. We have the order date. Whoops. We have the order date. And we're just gonna go through all this uh, country, city, state, product ID, product name, sales, quantity, and finally, gross revenue. So since we are doing this all over again, what we actually are gonna do as well is we're gonna clear this data out as well through the code. That way we're always uh, using the fresh data. So right over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say sheet.get data range. So the full data set right now, and we're gonna say clear content. So when we run this, it's going to get all the records from the Airtable API. It's going to do that loop through everything to do while loop uh, using the offset to grab all the data. And then we're going to declare a new empty array sheet data, which first we're going to push in the header value. And then through the data, we're going to loop through that and then grab the field information from that object. And then it's going to find the sheet. It's going to clear any content out that's already in it. Then it's going to get the new range and then fill it in using our sheet data that we just organized. Back here, you can see row one just got the header row in it. And now your table is looking all nice and pretty. All 9,994 records of it. It says 9995 only because we added in that header row. But that's how we're gonna do it. Just a quick recap over here. Number one thing that you're gonna wanna do is when you're requesting Airtable, you have to figure out if there is an offset. So if there is an offset, you wanna add the offset parameter to the end of the URL, uh, the, the API endpoint URL that you're using in order to get the data from there. And once you have that, just go ahead and keep adding uh, that data, the records that you're getting from the API response and pushing it into an array that you can then use in order to add into your spreadsheet. Of course, since it is Airtable um, data, when you get it back, it's in an object. And so you want to break that object up by assigning uh, those fields to another array that you're going to use to actually push into Google Sheets. If you're not pushing into Google Sheets, you don't need to do this. Um, you can just use that data as you need. However, since we were pushing it into a Google Sheet for uses outside, uh, perhaps that's with Google Data Studio or something else, or you just want to use it in a spreadsheet, uh, you have to assign those records uh, into a Excel or Google Sheet friendly format, which is just an array, a nested array. If you're doing a lot of work with Airtable, make sure to check out this video and many of the other ones that we have. But I'm a guy called Joe, this is Bootstrapping Tools. It's been a pleasure and we're out.